The Tenth Commandment reminds us not to covet your neighbour's wife, servant, ox, donkey, or anything else that belongs to him. I find this one of the most difficult commands to keep. Not with regard to my next door neighbour, he doesn't even have a donkey. But more with others I see who seem to have their lives sorted. Have you met these people? There's loads of them on social media. There are some of them in our churches too. These people, they seem to have great jobs, wonderful relationships. The ones who uh, never do any coveting of their own. They seem to effortlessly be able to keep every biblical command. They are godly and wise and perfect. You look at them and think, I wish my faith was like that. I wish my life was like that. This is the sort of person I think our psalmist is describing today. Lord, who may dwell in your sacred tent? Who may live on your holy mountain? The one whose way of life is blameless, who does what is righteous, who speaks the truth from their heart, whose tongue utters no slander, who does no wrong to a neighbour and casts no slur on others, who despises a vile person but honours those who fear the Lord, who keeps an oath even when it hurts, who does not change their mind, who lends money to the poor without interest, who does not accept a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things will never be shaken. Now, maybe that describes you, but for me, it describes the person I wish I could be. Actually, I think there's probably only one person that embodied all of that, and that's Jesus. That person on Facebook or in church who seems to have it all sorted, they they don't. They sin, they make mistakes, they struggle in their lives too. So what's the point in this psalm? If in describing the one who can dwell with the Lord, it eliminates every single one of us. Well, there are two things I want to leave with you. Firstly, Jesus has made a way for each of us to dwell with God. We don't have to be perfect and we certainly shouldn't pretend to be. But maybe we should strive for this. Maybe the characteristics in these Psalms are things to strive for, even though we might not obtain them. The second thing to note, I think, is that everything the Psalm says we need to do in order to dwell with God, all of them is about how we treat other people. Not coveting their lives, but being truthful, not doing them wrong, but keeping our promises, working for the good of others. I wonder how you can work for the good of your neighbour today. It might be a comforting word or a prayer. It might be a practical task undertaken or a listening ear. It might be to tell them about Jesus. What can you do for your neighbour today? Because by doing it, by being like Jesus to those people around you, you become a little bit more like that impossible person described in Psalm 15. A little bit more like Christ. 